Hi, I'm Joel Wilson with Applied Controls, and today I'm going to walk you through a demonstration of Metro Toledo's M300 transmitter. Now, this transmitter that you see here is available for water applications as well as process applications. It's available in a one or a two channel. The one has two outputs, the two channel has four outputs. The measurements that you can make with this transmitter include pH or P, connectivity, dissolved oxygen, and ozone. As we go through this, uh, I will take you through all the functions, uh, how you set it up, uh, the different uh, ways you can calibrate it to monitor your sensors. The one last thing to uh, mention with this, it can do both a digital and an analog sensor. And the key is a digital sensor with Metro Toledo with their ISM technology. So now I'm going to walk you through some of the basics of uh, the M300 transmitter. It is a touch screen, and so here are the four uh, function buttons that we can use to navigate through the transmitter to help us uh, get information, calibrate, or whatever we might need. The ISM is Intelligent Sensor Management. That is where we can find out information about our sensor, the health of it, how much life it has left, a lot of helpful information for you. Our Favorites tab, here's our Calibration and Maintenance, and then our Settings. So uh, if we come in here to ISM, uh, we can see several functions here. If we go to iMonitor, this is where we find out the life of our sensor. So DLI is Dynamic Lifetime Indicator. This sensor is still good for 380 days. TTM is Time to Maintenance. It's uh, 30 days away. Calibra adaptive Calibration Timer is at 14 days. So everything looks good. The CIP and SIP, that's Clean in Place, Steam in Place, and, and we're looking good there. So you can monitor your sensor for its health. If there were any messages, uh, you would know that because where it's black up here at the top and bottom, those would be flashing. And if it is, this is where you can find any messages, but we don't have any. Uh, ISM Diagnostics. This is a two-channel transmitter, but I only have one hooked up, so I can only see channel one. If we wanted to sit there and see sensor monitor, we just see the same thing that we saw with our lifetime indicator, maintenance timer, calibration timer. But it also adds uh, hours of operation, and we can see that this sensor has only been used for nine hours. It's a, a nice way for you to know how long that sensor has been in service. Because uh, I get questions all the time uh, of folks saying, you know, how do I know? And this gives you the exact time. The other cool thing it stores is its max temperature that it's seen. And that's important too because let's say somebody were to uh, steam out a line and uh, uh, run a, a temperature past that sensor that is out of its spec range, you can know then if that sensor has uh, been damaged by that heat. So, um, and that is with the uh, ISM Diagnostics. Cal data, this will save uh, up to five different uh, uh, Cal data for you. So we can see what our actual Cal is, what it is right now. If we wanted to go see our factory Cal, we can do that. But then if we wanted to see our last three Cal's, uh, we can look at all that information. If we look at uh, our actual Cal, we can see this was uh, calibrated on March 26th, uh, which it did you know, yesterday. And we can see what our slope was, what our offset was, and so forth. Uh, really nice information so you know when it was calibrated and you get some info information. Another cool feature that I like, it offers sensor info. So if this sensor is in the process and you don't know what part number you had, if you don't uh, want to take the time to go find the order to see what that part number is, we can hit sensor info and we see our serial number and then we see our part number. So you could call me up and say, hey Joel, I need to order 5200573 and I'll get those coming your way. Same thing with our hardware. So this transmitter, if you needed to add another one, here you go. There's our serial number, there's our part number. You call me up and say, Joel, I need to order 3028077 and I'll get that ordered for you. So if we come back here, our favorites tab, this is basically just a shortcut menu. So if we hit this and we wanted to go to ISM Diagnostics, we're there. Uh, just whatever's most benef beneficial for you is what you'd put in that and you can customize the Favorites tab however you want. You can do your calibrations of your sensors right in the field if you'd like on your transmitter and this is how you would do that. So the next button we want to look at is our calibration and so here's where we can calibrate our sensor, uh, the electronics of meter, do our maintenance, our cleaning uh, of the sensor right through the transmitter itself. So we come here to calibrate sensor. We can see we can select what channel, we can select what unit we want to do, and then we have an option for one point uh, 
method or we can do a two point or we can do a process. I want to do a two point pH uh, calibration. And then my options here is where I can select my buffer tab. So I'm going to come here and select my correct buffer tab and we're ready to start calibrating. So what we do is we'd hit cal and then it tells you hit next when the sensor is in buffer one. So I'm going to take my sensor. I'm going to clean it off and then I am going to take it and put it into buffer one. And so I've got it into buffer one and I'm going to hit next. And so uh, you can see the H that's flashing at the top of the screen. That means we're in a holding pattern while we're uh, calibrating. That way no, no readings of our cal is going back. It is recognized as 7 pH and is calibrating to that 7 pH. So we have calibrated to our 7 pH. Now stay and put the sensor into buffer number two. So I'm going to take my sensor. I'm going to clean it off. I've got my buffer number two. I'm going to put my sensor into buffer two. And I'm going to hit next. And what I do is I'm going to calibrate to my second buffer. You can see we're still in the holding pattern. It is recognized that it is a 4 pH and we are calibrating to our 4. So we have finished calibrating to our uh, second pH and we can see our slope is 99.5, what our offset is. So we have an option of either adjusting or calibrating the sensor. If you calibrate, you're going to calibrate the, the sensor. If we adjust it, we're going to adjust the sensor to the calibration that we just did. That way we make sure we're getting accurate readings out in the field. And so as it is adjusting the sensor, it is now telling us the calibration has been saved successfully and to reinstall the sensor. And we have done that. We're and that is how you calibrate your sensor using the transmitter out in the field. There is an easier way of doing your calibrations with the benefit of using these digital ISM sensors where you can just plug and play, pull it out of the system and bring it back to your shop, especially when the temperatures are you know, over 100 degrees or it's zero out. That's not a fun way to do your calibrations through the transmitter. Uh, we, they use a system called iSense and I will show you how to use that in another video. Now I'm gonna walk you through a few basic steps of setting up different parameters uh, with the channel display and uh, it's pretty simple and easy to use via the touch screen. And so now we'll go to our final tab which is our settings tab. If we come here this is where we can set everything up. So if we hit measurement we want to do channel setup. This is a two channel so I can hit one or two. Now I can see channel two if I wanted to but we only have one set up so channel one. Uh, with this button over here I can name it whatever I would like. So if it's in, say plant one boiler or UAN or, or you know whatever it might be, uh, you can name it. Uh, the sensor, we have ISM. We can also do analog if it was analog, but uh, we have ISM. And our measurement range over here is PHORP. Now this is something that you can change. I can set it at auto and when it's set at auto like that, no matter what sensor you would plug into it, as long as it has that same connection on the cable here, it's going to automatically read it and start measuring for you. Uh, if you wanted it to only be for pH, we can set that pH ORP. And now if somebody were going to enter it, uh, or try to put in a uh, connectivity or DO, it would give an error message and it would not read. So it just helps people, especially if you have this two channel, we have one at pH, one at con connectivity. It helps people from accidentally switching those channels. Uh, so. M1 through M4 is a different measurements that we see on our home screen. So we were seeing pH, we see our temperature in Celsius, we see our volts, and we also see our DLI, dynamic lifetime indicator. So let's say you want to see uh, your temperature in Fahrenheit instead of uh, Celsius. There's also a lot of other different things that you could see. And we don't care about our volts. Um, we've already got pH. I don't want my ORP. There's my Celsius. Uh, I want to see my, uh, let's say, calibration timer, and then I got my dynamic lifetime indicator, and that's how I want to see it. I can sit here and go home. I want to save those changes, 
And now there's the, the uh, my my view. So I've got my pH, my temperature in Fahrenheit, calibration timer, data lifetime in, indicator. Again, you can customize those however you want. So getting back to measurement, that was channel setup. So now we'll go to display mode. I have it set for one channel. If I had two channels, I can do two channels. Come here, let's save. Let's go home. And now I have a split screen that would give both of my channels at the same time. However, if you did not, if you just want to see one channel at, the, at a time, we'll save that, yes. We'll come back home. At any point, you can hit these arrow keys and go from channel one to channel two. Uh, so it's really customizable how you want to do that. So this is also where you can do your, your alarms. You can do uh, your cleaning. If you have a cleaning system hooked up to this, we can, uh, it would take a special housing. But you can set up in different intervals every every you know four hours. Want to clean for thirty seconds? Assign it to a certain channel. Uh, we can do that. We can also do a user management here, and so this is where you can put a password to keep certain people out or only limit the amount of people who can get in there and make changes. Uh, it's it's really up to you how you want to do that. But uh, that's kind of it. Just the basics. We can go back home, and now we got our regular reading. Uh, pretty nice product here by Mettler Toledo to make your applications pretty easy. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration of the Mettler Toledo M300 transmitter. If you have any questions or if you have any upcoming applications where you need help, you can definitely contact me by email at jwilson at ac-acsi.com or you can give me a call. My phone number is 405-255-9440. Thank you so much for watching this demonstration today and let me know how I can help.